today I'm going to show you how to make the stuffed wontons for your uh, one of your hot hors d'oeuvre labs. Um, you need to make sure that before you start doing anything that everything is prepped, cut, etc. We've already done that ahead of time. Um, so I'll show you how to go about making this, these, excuse me, and then we will assemble and cook and you will eat and enjoy. So some of the first couple things you're going to need is two ounces of cream cheese, which I've already put into our um, bowl, and it says in your recipe that you're going to whip it with a wire whip. What I find is that when you whip it with a wire whip, the cream cheese goes into the center of the wire whip, so I'm just using a rubber scraper, okay? And you just want to make sure that it's light and fluffy, like so, okay? So I've already done that. Then to that, you are going to add in two ounces of crab meat. Uh, your step one is almost like a crab ragoon, so... Um, <clears throat> Essentially, it's the same exact thing. We're just calling it a stuffed wonton. Um, so we're going to add this, and you have two ounces. And this is just imitation crab that I've just diced up. And you want it kind of fairly small. Put that right into there, just like so. To that also, I'm going to add in um, my garlic, which I put right in there now. Okay, mix, mix, mix. Then you're going to have a little bit of green onion, and you want it finely cut. You don't want big, big chunks. I'm going to put that right in there. You only need a quarter of an ounce of the green onion. It's just going to add a little bit of flavor. And then I'm also going to add in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. It says TT. So I put, I think, uh, about a teaspoon in here. And I'm, TT means two taste. So I'm just going to add a little. And then I'm going to judge it based off of the color. You don't want it too dark because it's going to overpower the mixture, but you want enough flavor in there so it's tasty when you bite into your stuffed wonton after it's cooked. So that's about good. And if you, if you like Worcestershire sauce, if you've never had it before, make sure you taste it before you actually put it in. If you don't like it because it's for flavor, simply don't add it. Just another dimension of flavor. Okay? Um, for a little bit of a textural appeal and flavor, we're going to add sesame oil. Sesame oil comes from sesame seeds. I'm just going to use a little. I'm just going to mix that in, just like so. We'll be right back. When I get so we're back, and I've also added in a little bit of salt and pepper. And again, the salt and pepper is also to taste, so that's based off your flavor preference of how salty or how uh, heat, much heat you want to add to your your mixture. Um, I'm going to set this aside, um, and while that's sitting aside, before I uh, uh, assemble our wontons, I'm going to show you how to make our sauce. So I've got my recipe. Okay, so for our sauce, your sauce is almost like a little bit of a sweet and sour type of sauce that you're going to be making. It's just simply used for dipping. A lot of times students are like, ah, oh, it looks weird, it's gross, blah, blah, blah. But the stuffed wonton with the sauce, it's what makes the dish complete. So it's, it's a nice little enhancement. I'm going to grab a little. So to our pan, this is a really quick, easy recipe. We're just going to turn this on, okay? And your recipe calls for you to combine all of the ingredients at once. Instead of, um, I put everything in little bowls and baggies, but you can put them directly in your pan and then apply heat. So the first thing we're using is apricot preserves, which is like almost like a jelly, but it's, it's from fresh fruit which has been cooked with uh, sugar, and it's like, a, it's like a jam type thing. So add that directly to your meat, to your pan, and then apply it. Okay. To that, we are going to add some fresh ginger, which, this is ginger. Um, it's ginger root. You would take off the outside, and then you're just going to shred it. And it's kind of a, like a woody texture, so you don't, and it's very, very flavorful. So you don't need that much. You only need about three-fourths of a teaspoon. So I'm just going to take out half of that. I'm measuring this by sight. That might even be a little much. Mix that up. You can already see it starting to kind of melt the sauce. Very smelly. Good smell. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of my dry mustard. Another just dimension of flavor to give it a little zest. And then a little bit of red wine vinegar. Red wine vinegar is a red color, so it kind of adds a little bit of acid to that. 
I'm just going to stir that around until it's all combined. Like so. You don't want any big chunks. And then as soon as it's done, which it is, it's very quick as I told you, I'm just going to pour it in. So like a, a little custard cup, small bowl. And you're ready um, for it to, to make your wontons. And this is just going to set aside okay, until it's done. We are back and I have been assembling our stuffed wontons. I'm going to show you how to do this in just one second. So to do this, you're going to be using what's called wonton skins. They just sell this in the produce section at Jewel, Dominic's, etc. It's the same exact skins that you would use for like egg rolls. They're just smaller in shape. Okay? So they're very delicate, so take them off with caution. So to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to take your wonton skin, you're going to uh, use some water, and there's like a like flour starch on here. So it kind of serves as like a glue with the water, and then you can press it together easily. So I'm going to take about one teaspoon of this mixture, of our crab mixture, this cream cheese, just like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up and just fold it over, line up my angles, and then I'm going to press out all the extra air, okay, just like so. Then I'm going to put another little dab at each corner, and I'm going to fold these up press and then you have your stuff on top and they're ready for frying. Let me show you one more time. So take your skin, then take your water, all four uh, sides, just like so. Take one teaspoon of your mixture. You don't want too much or else it will all seep out while they're frying and it is disgusting. So what you're going to do, fold over, Press all the air out, like so, pick up, and then press your sides together. Okay. So now we're ready for frying. So to do this, I've already heated up our oil. Um, you'll probably be using the deep fryer for this, but you can certainly use one of these at home. It works just about the same. Um, I have this on a lower heat, but it's all shimmering, so it should be ready to go. And what you're going to do is, uh, with your tongs, simply place one of these in here. And our oil, once you see the little bubbles, kind of, you know it's, it's hot enough. You're just going to kind of let it float to the top. I'm going to put a couple others in there as that gets warmer. You don't want to overcrowd your oil or else it will bring down the temperature and these simply will not cook. I'm going to put four in there. Okay. And what we're doing right now is we're just simply waiting for it to float to the top. Once it comes to the top, I'll be flipping it back and forth, which is called the swim method. And then um, just to make sure that it gets golden brown. So we'll be okay, right. Okay, and we're back, and these are a nice golden brown color, as you can see. And I flipped them over a couple times using the swim method. So I'm just going to take them out one by one. Make sure you have a tray with paper towels underneath. Remember, these are extremely hot, so wait for them to cool before you go about eating them. Um, you may be graded. Your teacher may want to take your photo, so make sure that you are looking... I'm at your presentation, and then you will serve these with your dipping sauce. Enjoy!